Hey everybody, thank you for coming back to Living To Do's review of The Shy, uh, season 5, episode 5, called We Don't Have To Take Our Clothes Off. First, I would like to ask you to like, share, and um, subscribe to this channel. I would really appreciate it. And uh, let's get started with the review. I enjoyed this episode. I thought it was really, really good. Um, first, let's talk about Jake and Gemma. Gemma has given Jake her pregnancy test, her positive pregnancy test. And he's asking, what are, what are we going to do? And she said she'll take care of it. But Jake wants to keep the baby. 16-year-old Jake wants to keep this baby. Um, and Gemma doesn't. She says it's her body and her decision. And um, he asks, why don't you want my baby? Because she says she wants to live, you know. That's not, that's not her dream, you know, to have his baby. I'm surprised Jake wants a baby. I think maybe he just wants family is what he wants. Um, so Jake later talks to Victor, his brother, and he asked him, have you ever got a girl pregnant? And Victor asks, is Gemma pregnant? And Jake saw, oh, no, no, no. And he doesn't tell his brother. His brother knows he's lying. He knows something was wrong. He knows he's lying, but he's going to let him, it looks like, tell him at his own pace and not uh, push him for the information. Basically, you told him that you got a girl pregnant. But Jake later goes to Kevin's house um, and he tells Kevin that Gemma's pregnant and Jake cons uh, Kevin consoles Jake. He's such a good friend. He sees that Jake is sad. And Jake looks sad all over his face. Um, and the thing is, Jake got Kevin's ex-girlfriend pregnant. You know, they're Eskimo brothers at this point, And he's still consoling him. He's no bad blood between them right now. But in talking to him, you know, he's like, you know... That, you know, you're not really ready for a child. They have a conversation. And in the conversation, Jake looks at Kevin and says, are you jealous? And I'm thinking, jealous? What does he have to be jealous about? You're 16 years old and your girlfriend's pregnant. He has his whole life in front of him. Why would he be jealous? But while Jake is over there, um, he is going to help Kevin with a cosplay um, costume. Simone was over there earlier getting dressed for a cosplay event. I don't know why she was at Kevin's house getting dressed. And I guess she kind of talked Kevin into doing it. And Jake helped him. Actually, they went over to Jake's house. And Jake got up some sweats and painted some lightning bolts or whatever. He got real creative. Um, Jake's a good friend. He just took it upon himself and to handle it for his friend. That was so cool and it probably got his mind off of his problems. Later, Jake goes over to Gemma's house and to talk to her dad to let him know that Gemma's pregnant. And they do this in Gemma's room. Jake and Gemma are sitting on Gemma's bed and to me, the optics, why are you in her room like this? All of you, especially with this subject matter, you should be downstairs in the living room discussing this, not sitting on her bed. Okay. Gemma is having a hard time with, the, or at least she's thinking about it a lot. She, you know, she's pregnant. She's a teenage girl. She comes from a good home. She has her whole life in front of her. She's very smart. College plans were kind of in her future somewhat, um, but definitely she had a future. And there, it looks like there's a college day event somewhere, and Maisha and Gemma are there. Maisha's all dressed up in a little yellow dress running around to the, all the booths, getting information, smiling, probably dreaming about her future. In fact, there's um, different things uh, around the room saying, um, follow your dream. So, you know, this is about their future, and the sky's the limit. But Gemma's looking, she's looking... Um, detached, uninterested. 
you just see two girls now have two different directions. In fact, you would, would have thought Maisha living in the projects would have had Gemma's life, somebody getting her pregnant, and she's going to just continue on with this life. But she, her future is bright, and she's out, you know, excited about it. While Gemma, you know, coming from a good home, she finds herself as a teenage mom. Two different, they're, it's like they're going in two different directions. Okay, let's talk about Shah, Rashad and Deja. Um, they see them in on, in robes. They must be at Deja's house. Um, and they're cuddled up on the bed. It looks like she just had given him a facial. And he's been looking good. The last couple episodes, I think it was last episode. He just looks really good. His face is so much clearer. And... She, he's looking in the mirror at himself and what she put on him was sea moss and he does, he does look so, I don't know if that's really what got him looking good, but I know for a fact, sea moss is the truth. Um, I've been taking sea moss for a couple of months now, facials and, uh, capsules. It has done wonders for me and I don't know, I see a lot of people promoting it now. If you're not with it, get with it, sea moss. Um, he says he's never felt so special before, you know, she's giving him a lot of attention and she says she never thought about going without going with somebody who's a felon or has a record, I guess. And she says until now, she's really into him. And he told her that he loved her and only been dating for a few weeks. Um. Uh, Later, uh, Rashad is at Smokey's. He's eating. But Emmett is at the cash register when someone points a gun at his face. And he, the guy wants all the money, of course. Rashad sees this and he stops it because he knows it's Bacardi. He re recognizes him, calls him by name, talks him down, gets the gun from him, has him sit in the, his uh, at where, where he's sitting. But he goes and he asks Emmett, who's just been held up at gunpoint to give the gunman some free food. Emmett doesn't want to give him any free food. In fact, Rashad, if you want the boy to eat, you pay for his food. You don't get a hookup after you put a gun in somebody's face. And Rashad is trying to get to this kid. He wants to know, you know, what's he been up to. The guy says he's been stealing packages and whatever's in him, he's you know, selling it and getting the money for it. And he's just a lost kid. He starts to cry. He's staying at a friend's home. He was until his, on their couch until he got kicked out. And um, Rashad wants to bring him home with him. He has, he feels for the kid because I guess he was in a similar position at one time. And he's just trying to help somebody. Um, so that package stealing has been a problem. Um, in the community, and Tracy and Rosalind talk to Duda and Q about it. They want them to do something about it because they're not being really policed by um, policemen and people who want their packages, so they want to find out who's behind it and get a, uh, put a stop to it. So Q and Duda go out and they find these people who are doing it, and they rough them up a bit, and in turn, Q wants to go into business with them. Ugh, Q. Q is no good. He is the one who actually raped Tracy when she was a teenager and got her pregnant with her son, Jason. So that's her son, Jason's dad. I wouldn't even sit in a room and talk to him about anything. Um, later, they go back and tell him that it's taken care of and... Um, they're in business with the people, and that's not what Tracy wants to hear. But Q says he knows what he's doing. Ugh, Q. Even the sight of him just bothers me. Um, and Duda. So, um, Rashad brings Bacardi back to Victor's house. He lets him stay there. Uh, but he doesn't even have permission to do so. When Victor gets in there, gets home, he tells him no. Take him to Trinity House, but I guess it's too late for that. And Rashad really fought for Bacardi to stay at the house. His a house that he doesn't pay rent in and it's not his house. 
So McCarty's going to end up staying on the couch for a little while until he can get his act together. And, um, and he finds himself um, home alone. He invites Papa, who he's been hanging out with. He invites him over. I don't know if he had permission, but he only been there a couple hours and he's already inviting people over and he invited Papa to come over to smoke weed. It's taking too many liberties. That's why you get kicked out. Um, when they all get back in the house in the, later in the evening, Jake comes and sees that Bacardi's at his house and he gets into a um, scuffle with Bacardi and Victor and Rashad have to um, have to separate them because Bacardi is the one who set up Victor for that punch and he made it go viral, which Amani saw and never came home again. So he messed up his whole relationship, his future wife, and he's supposed to just welcome him into the house. This is why people have a problem with him. You know, that's Rashad had wanted him to come in and, you know, give him a place to stay. But did you think about the circumstances, what this man has already ruined for this family? Anyway, so I guess McCarty's going to be staying over there for a while. Um, this episode, we saw Fatima and Victor get together. Looks like they were at the center. There was some type of function going on that Tiara invited Fatima to. I guess she's a um, a journalist, so she could do a write-up about it. Any press is good press to bring in donations to the center. And Victor's there all dressed up, and Fatima notices he's, um, he's, uh, she notices that he's wearing cologne. He takes her out to lunch. When they're at lunch, they're having a good lunch. And Fatima asked Victor, so when did you make your transition and I was put off guard there. I go, transition? I know she's a transgender woman. And you're asking Victor when he made his trans uh, transition. Uh, but what she meant was from um, private citizen to the public um, spotlight. Well, that caught me off guard. And she asked him also, when was the last cis woman that you dated? And he says all women are uh, transgender women are are women. And but when she did ask bef before that, he did think about it, and he never gave an answer to that exact question. Uh, she wanted to know. Uh, why didn't you ever go public with your transgender girlfriend? Because um, right now he's with Tierra, and Tierra is a cisgender woman, and in the public eye, it's more, um, it's more, it's received better. People, it, you're, it's perceived better, I should say, and I guess people would probably like you more, and in, in if you're instead of you being with a trans woman. And she says, if you don't declare your love for them, like in public, you erase them. So that's giving him something to think about. And I guess later this season, we'll see maybe he'll declare his love for maybe Fatima or maybe Amani, but the trans community. And also answer the question, uh, when was the last time you dated a cis straight woman? And also... Um, she said something else that was interesting. Um, what did she say? I can't even remember. It was something very interesting that was said. Um, okay, if I think of it, I'll just throw it in later. Okay, um, so after lunch, oh, I know what it was. He, she, he, he wanted to know what it was called for a straight man to be interested in trans women, what was that called? And he didn't know, and she didn't know either. But if anybody knows, I'm interested. I don't know. Is that a new, a new, well, I just want to know, what would you call that? Um, anyway, after they had lunch, they, I guess he's taking her home. They're sitting in his car and he's smoking a joint with her. And she asked, do you miss Amani? And she, he said mainly in the mornings, he doesn't like um, to sleep alone. And she said she didn't either. 
He did mention that Tierra does sometimes stay over, um, but she's just for public relations, of course. And uh, Fatima says that, you know, she can keep a secret, but she won't be a secret. And he just likes her more and more. And they were kissing in the car and he opens the car door for her and he lets her out. So, I don't know. It's just a nice romantic relationship that he is showing right now. Um, next, let's talk about Emmett and Keisha. Now, we see Emmett eating breakfast. So, and Keisha's there. She's making her some toast. So, they're having breakfast. Is she staying over there? What's what's going on here? Why is she there in the morning? And where are the kids? Where is her baby? Um, he's over there eating breakfast, listening to um, D. Ray Davis is um, I think it's Mark Sean or somebody. He's doing this this talk of to guys to be celibate and how it helps you and you know and and Keisha wants to know what he's listening to and. He says that this listening to this guy's um, podcast or whatever it is, is making him a good man. Um, and she tells him, you're already a good man. And he goes, well, he's not going to be in the clubs anymore. He's going to be staying home, being more with his kids. And that's really, really nice. He's growing up a bit. Um, the situation after he got robbed, he comes home and Keisha's there. So what is the living situation with Keisha? She gives him a consoling hug because, you know, that messed up his mind. You know, your tough guy in Chicago doesn't matter. Your life could have ended that day. That gun was in his face. And um, he's going to go take a shower. They're going to have a card night. And she kind of invited herself. And um, he brought over smoky food from where he works. And she says she's going to make us, you know, make better food for everybody when they come over to eat. And he's going to go take a shower while she starts cooking. Well, we see him come out the shower. And we also see that Keisha has made this whole Thanksgiving looking spread while Emmett was in the shower. <laughs> TV magic. Um... The card game, they come over, everybody comes over the card game, and the people that are in attendance are Darnell, which is Emmett's dad, Rashad, and Victor, and Keisha. And no one questioned why Keisha was over there. Um, they had a good time, had brown liquor, and they were just talking and playing. I think Keisha actually ended up win, uh, winning. I think they were in teams, and she won. Um, she showed that she can hang with the boys. Later, they leave. Keisha stays behind, and they are on the couch, kissing. Well, first they're talking, and the song comes on, hours and hours, and Keisha loves that song. And she says that um, she could look at him for hours and hours. Then they start kissing, and he has been celibate this whole time, but they had sex on the couch. So that was how the episode ended. I love the episode. I thought it was sweet. Um... Especially for Emmett and Keisha with their budding relationship. So that is all for now. Please drop a like, comment on the video, and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it and I thank you in advance. Also, check out my channel and my other videos. I have travel videos and other TV and movie reviews as well. But that is it for now. Thanks for watching or listening to the end. I gotta go because I got living to do. Bye.